My name is Mathias Dumoucron and um, I'm a postdoc researcher at the Institute for Psychoacoustic and Elec Electronic Music in uh, Ghent University. And uh, this project actually is... Yes? This project is a collaboration with uh, Steph Stephanie Weiser, who is an ethnomusicologist at the Museum of uh, Musical Instruments in Brussels. And we are trying to uh, characterize the effect of uh, timber sh shapers like bridges and uh, sympathetic strings in industry chordophones. Uh, okay, so, but when I look at the audience, I have the feeling that I'm not exactly the best person to, to speak about uh, Indian music, but I will try not to. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> Um, sorry. Okay. Um, so, what do you mean exactly by uh, timber shapers? Um, most of the of the Indian chordophones, Hindustani chordophones, contains at least one of the two devices described here. So, on the left, uh, you have a sarangi. That they are shown on the figure on the left. There's a sarangi on the left and a sitar on the right. And um, for example, on the sitar, we have this uh, wide, wide curved bridges, which gives a spectrally rich and buzzing sound that are shown uh, below. And uh, we can hear what it gives. So first, you, you will listen without the, the bridges, uh, with, uh, with uh, normal bridges, let's say. Is it possible to be a bit louder? Uh, yes, but on, on my computer I cannot time uh, at the maximum. No, no, it, it's already at the maximum. Interesting. I don't have a volume control here. Low battery. What? Uh, but there's nobody uh, up there? Uh, the control? Usually no. Yeah. Okay, so maybe I will f first show the tempura, which is a bit louder. Uh, so for the sitar, we can hear a slight difference, but it's even more striking with the tempura. Uh, so you will first hear without the with normal bridge, and then the, s the second sound will be will be uh, a normal. I mean, um, not a large bridge, and the second sound will be will be. Uh, with the large bridge, and then we will hear the normal um, accompaniment of the tempura. Is it okay, let's try again. So it's, we didn't hear the first, but. So we clearly hear the spectrally rich and buzzing sound that it gives. Maybe it should be a, a bit louder again, if it's possible, the sound. Uh, and the sympathetic strings, so, which are called taraf, they give some kind of haze of harmonic resonances. And we can see them uh, below as well, uh, on, the, on the right and on the left. Uh, so you will hear t uh, a sound with taraf and then without taraf. So it clear, clearly gives uh, very diff uh, different things. But I think the, the mic is uh, louder, but I'm not sure that here it's louder. Um, so f from an aesthetic point of view, uh, some authors claim that one of the characteristics of Indian Hindustani music is uh, an ideal of aesthetic saturation, which is uh, seen, for example, in the progression of the, of the pieces. Uh, with which arrives to some kind of uh, rhythmical and um, textual cl uh, climax. And this uh, ideal involves um, some essential uh, ideas, like the continuity of line ornaments and a sonic depth 
or textual richness that must be achieved without compromising the dominance and subtlety of melody. And the last part is quite interesting to me because it's quite difficult to obtain uh, a tex textual richness and at the same time have um, a, a very, uh, a cl the clarity of the melody that is not hidden be behind the resonances. Uh, so that's, wha that's on this part that we will focus on this presentation. So we made some experiments with some um, t two main ideas in mind. Uh, the, the first one was um, we wanted to, to examine the influence of timber shapers on the sound, so try to make some links between what uh, musicians say about the influence of Taraf and um, some objective description. Um, and the second idea, and we'll uh, mainly focus on that in this uh, presentation, it's trying to link uh, this, um, this measurements with some uh, ideal of aesthetic saturation and try to refine this um, description of, of the compromise of the, tra uh, the balance that has to be find, found between the textual richness, richness and the clarity of, of the melodic line. We made some uh, recordings with uh, sitar players and uh, sarangi players. They had to play different things like uh, scales or rags uh, with uh, isolated notes and uh, linked notes, some short musical composition and improvisation, and in three conditions. For, so for the taraf, it was uh, for the sarangi, it was uh, normal than without taraf, and for the sitar, we had a, a, a third condition, which is which was without the jawawi effect. We were blocking the the bridge. And for the and the, the aim of the analysis was to quantify the contribution of taraf to the over, overall sound, and to illustrate as well some computational problems uh, that we have with this kind of instruments. And in this presentation, we will uh, focus on the effect of taraf on sarangi playing. So uh, a few words about the sarangi. So it's a bowed bowed string instrument with three main bowed strings and a lot of uh, sympathetic strings called Taraf, up to 35 in four sets. So you can see the four sets on the, on the, on the figure. Uh, some are on the side and some are on the top, at the upper part. And uh, on, the top on the top, you can see also some uh, two small uh, bridges here on the sympathetic strings. And the tuning is uh, adjusted by the player, as well as sometimes the number of strings and the flatness of the bridge uh, very often as well. Um, what musicians say about the taraf, it's interesting to know what they feel this uh, influence. So some of them same said, without them the sound is dry and laf lifeless, you heard that in the, the example. Uh, some more mystical uh, in, uh, interpretation, they are the soul of the sangi, I think uh, Narayan uh, said that uh, in, in one of his books. Uh, many of them say that it helps to play in tune because uh, when they play a note they can see visually that it's uh, vibrating and then can they can hear it as well. And uh, actually a very practical uh, consideration, uh, when we were doing the experiment, many players di didn't want to play without the taraf. They, were that they said that it was impossible. And one of them, one of them said, oh, it's, it's very difficult, but it's a very good exercise. I will ask my, uh, my uh, student to do it. Um, so first, because uh, the players are quite free to tune the, um, the taraf, it can be interesting to know. Uh, we have first to analyze how it's tuned for each player during the experiments. This is a, a citation by uh, Ramnarayan Ramna Ramna again. Um, he would can tune the sangi is al already half a sangi player. We can imagine that uh, tuning 35. Uh, uh, 35 uh, taraf strings, uh, and uh, according to, to one's taste, it's already qu quite a, a big job. Um, so to, to, to examine the, the tuning, we plucked the taraf strings one by one and uh, analyzed the fundamental frequency and the decay of the partials. So for the tuning, we can see that on the, the, on the the, tar the taraf string on the left are tuned quite chromatically here. Almost already uh, all the notes are present between the chromal knee to the high sa. And the, the taraf strings on the top are just tuned to important notes uh, of the rag. And it's important to, 
to notice as well that these strings are the strings with the Jawa Jawa bridge with the wide bridges. Uh, for the decay, uh, so we uh, here you can see the, um, the evolution of the different partial of the sound for two different sounds. Um, so the this is the partial one, uh, two, three, etc. Et uh, in a in function of time, and uh, we can see that. It's quite a long uh, decay, especially for the first har harmonics, but the highest one uh, decay quite uh, quickly. I hope we can hear the sound. That's a louder, and then that's a high sound. So in the, in the analysis, because this decay are quite fast for higher harmonics, we'll, uh, we'll anal analyze the sound until like 3 kilohertz, uh, because we suppose that only the first partials participate to the long-lasting haze of harmonic reverberation. Uh, a musical example, so th this is the, the phrase that we heard at the beginning, uh, played without taraf at the top and uh, with taraf uh, at the bottom. Um, and uh, this is a spectrogram, so I hope everybody knows how to... Uh, okay, it represents the distribution of... Uh, f uh, the frequency distribution of energy uh, in function of time. So the time in uh, the x, lab, uh, x um, axis and the frequency on the y axis. And uh, when it's red, it's uh, very strong energies. So we can see, for example, without tariff, we can follow the melodic line here and the different partials. So the first harmonic, the second harmonic, and the third harmonic. The main difference is that uh, with, with Taraf we have uh, a very strong um, resonances, a very strong uh, energy components that are not uh, part of the melodic line and which are actually the decay of the, of the, the release of the Taraf strings which are excited before along the melody. If we look at uh, one particular note, we see clearly these uh, additional peaks in the spectrum, which corresponds well to the, to the tuning of the TARF. Uh, so now, uh, the idea will be to separate, to separate the melodic line and the contribution of TARF strings. Uh, first, we have to track the melody, um, as was mentioned uh, yesterday by uh, Suvarnalata Rao. There, there are a lot of problems with this kind of uh, instruments uh, concerning pitch tracking and melodic tracking of, uh, as a consequence. For example, on the spectrum here, we can see that there are some uh, very strong harmonic re reson resonances. And if we're trying to find a, an optimal path here, it's quite difficult. For example, here, uh, the, if we try to um, minimize the frequency uh, the frequency uh, differences, it's this path, but actually the melody is doing that. So it's sometimes uh, a bit tricky. There are strong spectral, uh, spectral variations, even on boats, uh, bo uh, boat notes, like here, you can see. And uh, the spectral peaks are very close. Uh, and sometimes um, the fundamental frequency of the melody, for example, will be in the same uh, spectral lobe than uh, so some of the tariff resonance. Uh, so the idea is to introduce some, uh, some musically pertinent knowledge in the algorithm and uh, knowledge about the, the instrument behavior and in particular about the uh, tariff behavior. So the basic idea uh, is first that uh, with, with this in instrument and in industrial music, there are very often continuous variation of pitch in the melodic line. And uh, we can also, uh, the Boyd the Boyd part and the reverberant part of the sound are, have also different um, sp spectrotemporal characteristics. Like, for example, the decay, uh, high harmonics tends to decay very quickly, so there are only a few harmonics. It can be a bit inharmonics as well in the decay, while the Boyd, the Boyd part is, uh, has very strong component until uh, high harmonics and quite um, harmonic, uh, un harmonically related. Uh, to compute the to to, pi to track the middle the pitch, uh, I, d I tried different um, different techniques, but most of them were always confused between the uh, between the string resonances and the melodic part. Uh, the one that worked the best was uh, the harmonic product uh, spectrum, which is a technique uh, many use in voice, I think, in voice uh, in pitch uh, in the analysis of pitch uh, in voice. 
Uh, the interest of this method is that it's kind of filter the weather burn part of the sound because we take uh, we sum up all the contribution of the harmonics. So if there are, uh, if we do that on ten harmonics, for example, if there is no contribution after the fifth, it will be uh, it will be filtered. It also increases the spectral resolution. And the drawback uh, is that we have some um, subharmonics uh, created or. Like here, you can see some some uh, spectral waves that sh should not be there, but they are they are not very that quite weak. So normally, it's, uh, it works. Then uh, we have some c candidates for the pitch, and then we make a smoothing with uh, and uh, we we try to find a, a path uh, using dynamic program method. And if uh, so, here you have the result on this um, on this graph. Here it was uh, before uh, the smoothing, so it was already quite uh, nice. And after the smoothing, we, we can get rid of uh, these uh, fluctuations here. You can see that here it was going to the resonance of the tariff up here. That we can see here and here. Uh, possible, so it, it worked quite well, but if we want to refine it, we can um, uh, use the knowledge about the tuning of the tariff. We know that for some of the frequencies, we'll have some problems. And also the novelty, uh, uh, which means that uh, no pitch can appear if it's it's not played uh, on the in the melody. The the tariff are only resonances, so it's just uh, pitches that were played before. So once we have the melodic contour, it's quite tempting to make a separation between the harmonic uh, part corresponding to the mel melody and the noise part corresponding to the reverberant part. So it gives that. It's a bit uh, quick and dirty, but it gives an, an, an illustration of these uh, different parts. And for the noisy part, so the, the tariff. So it's quite funny, but it doesn't give uh, really a, a measure uh, about the tariff string contribution. So th the idea is uh, to um, um, to detect um, other relevant spectral peaks uh, in a given frequency range, and to to compute the ratio between uh, the energy co corresponding to the harmonic uh, harmonics of the melody and the peaks corresponding to not to the harmonics, so the the the, the total uh, the total contribution of all the peaks. So here you can see that with the triangles, it's the harmonics of the melody, so here the fundamental, the first, the second, and the third, uh, yes, and uh, with the circles it's the peaks that are detected. And so we'll compute the, the energy between, uh, no, first we'll uh, count the number of peaks that are obtained, that are uh, above uh, a given uh, threshold, and uh, then we compute the energy between the uh, uh, the ratio between the energy corresponding to the uh, to the harmonic part and the to, uh, the, the total uh, energy, and th these are two com complementary measures because uh, one will give the number of um, of peaks, so it can be different um, dif different uh, frequencies, different uh, different um, notes that were played before, but it doesn't give uh, any information about uh, the uh, about how much it's influenced the sound and how, how much it contributes to, uh, to the sound. And this is information is given by the energy uh, ratio. So uh, uh, a few examples to finish. So here it's uh, this always the, the same example played first without a half and with a half. On the left it's without a half and on the right with a half. Um, on this graph here, the second one, uh, we first have the spectrogram again, and then on the second graph, it's the number of peaks that are found above the below defined before. In black, it's the uh, total uh, the number uh, total number of peaks, and in red, it's the um, theoretical number of peaks corresponding to the melody. So we can see that with the tariff, it stays very closely to the to the case uh, in which there are only peaks corresponding to the to the melody. But we, with, uh, with Taraf, it's uh, getting far, especially at the end here. And uh, you can see also some peaks, but it just corresponds to the bow changes because there were a very wide range of uh, spectral frequencies 
uh, frequencies are, are excited at the about changes. Um, and after we, we have the magnitude, the, the amplitude of the, the, the total energy of the, of the peaks in black and the, um, the energy of the harmonic part in red. And again, if we compute the, uh, the ratio, so here, it's staying very close to one, which means that there is no, almost no additional uh, sound uh, in the uh, almost uh, no additional uh, contribution in the overall sound, while we, we start off, we have something which deviate from, from one uh, a lot more. Uh, a second example, so with the, again, this, uh, this gap, this uh, musical composition played at different um, tempi because we were interested in knowing how the, 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 this text, textual richness is, uh, is influenced by the number of, uh, by, by, the, by the tempo of the, of the, of the music because very often it accelerates and cr creates more textual richness. So here is slow. Oops. fast, uh, a bit faster at least. And then it's uh, <coughs> the variation of the, uh, on this, on this gut uh, played very fast. Voilà. And um, so uh, first we can remark here that the, the melody is not uh, very well tracked because it's supposed to, to go down, but you heard in this example that there was a very, very strong uh, uh, harmonic component that, that stayed, that shined. They often use this word, the tariff string shine. And, uh, so, and that's why here we have this, uh, this artifact, which will not be here. But um, mostly we can see that um, because there are uh, much more musical event uh, when it's play, uh, played fast, um, the contribution of the of the tar strings uh, is more important, and it can be seen if we compare the very fast version here, where there are a very no a great number of uh, peaks detected, like uh, 30 up to 40, compared to the slow one in which it's it's, it's uh, mainly uh, stay very close to the um, uh, to the number, a theoretic number of, um, theoretical number of uh, harmonic. Uh, I think I will conclude because I don't have so much time. Uh, so in s uh, just to summarize, we, we try to quantify the, um, the contribution of the tariff strings to the overall sound and we wanted to illustrate some com computa uh, computational problems uh, like uh, related to uh, melodic detection in particular. And uh, in the perspective, um, I didn't s speak so much about the cl clarity of melodic line, but I think uh, something very interesting to do would be to make the same recording with a uh, sound which is not very well, um, which is not very well adjusted by the player. For example, the w where the tariff, uh, the tariff response is very too high, is it's really too high, and we cannot. Uh, at least an, an example in which the player considers that he, he will not play uh, with that and he, he will have to change something in the setting of the, of the instrument because, uh, because the clarity, the, the melodic line is not clear enough. And um, then we, we have some other recordings with Sita, for example, and uh, in that case we also have to, to adjust uh, some of the algorithm to, the particular, to these particular cases. Thank you. Um,